that demonstrates how much time you have in a 30 second pitch to do just about anything you want. Have you ever had an idea that could eventually become a mobile app? If so, you're the right place at the right time. I'm Mariana with App Zoro. A P P Z O R O. And we are a mobile app and web development company based here in Atlanta Tech Village. We help startups and enterprises with their development needs, just like we did with ATV when we developed their official mobile app. So if you have an idea and you don't know how to code, or you want your business to go mobile, please come talk to me after. Mariana with Epsor. Well, that was short. $16 billion problem. That's, uh, that's eye-catching. Good. Um, so we know exactly who this lady is. She's Barbara Jones, and the name of her company is Freeing Returns. I got nothing else to say about that. That was great. You can tell Mariana's been here a few times. She has practiced and done well and gotten a whole lot better at her pitch. So this is Mariana from App Zorro. Now she went way beyond, she wore the shirt, you can see the little logo up here, but she also turned around and wrote it on the board, wrote App Zorro on the board. The reason she did that is because she has a very thick accent. And when she had said this before a few times, the people in the audience didn't know didn't get app Zorro. They got app zero or something like that. And so she found it very helpful to just write it on the board. And she took the time to do that. That demonstrates how much time you have in a 30 second pitch to do just about anything you want. And she conquers her, uh, her heavy, thick Brazilian accent um, with uh, speaking very clearly, very slowly, and then taking the time to write it on the board. Good for her. Problem she didn't get around to until really later in the in the pitch when she said, um, "If you have an idea for an app and you don't know how to code, so for the startups, which we're at ATV, so it's full of startups, and it happens all the time that you get uh, uh, potential founders. They're not founders yet. They're entrepreneurs who uh, who have a great idea and they need a mobile app to implement that idea to solve somebody's problem." Um, but they're like me. They don't know how to, how to write code. I'm not a coder. I can come up with all kinds of ideas, but I can't get it from idea to my phone or your phone. So um, the problem is non-technical founders and entrepreneurs can't get their product out the door. They can't get the first prototype up. They can't get a product that works because they don't know how to code. You got a founder who knows how to code, boom, that's no problem. That's not their target audience. The solution is them. App Zorro, they are the solution. It's a great example of a service business giving a great pitch. They solve the problem. They do it for you. So you got a non-technical founder, got, an, got a, a great business idea, they've done some customer discovery, ready for a prototype or the real thing, and boom, they pay App Zorro to build that app. And they have instant credibility because of what she said. She said, we developed the official ATV mobile app. That's a pretty big deal. ATV is the fourth largest startup hub in the country. And the official app, which I have on my phone, is built by App Zorro. Instant credibility. So the reason she had to do that is because there's a thousand mobile development companies or development companies in every city, every big city, especially here in Atlanta. There's a lot of them. Which one do you choose? You choose the one ATV chose. So who is their customer? She said there were two, startups and enterprises. That's a very big difference. Um, I recommend you pick one. Just like Jeff Bezos, way back in the 90s, chose one customer, book readers. They wanted to buy books. He chose one customer, and then he blew it up from there. But he figured out how to make his process work with one type of customer. So every business starts off, every startup starts off needing one customer, that first customer, and then the first 10, first 100. And as you grow, you figure out where your customers are going to be, and you expand that beachhead. But you got to start off with one. So startups and enterprises, that's a big difference. You can get, a, get going with a startup in a matter of days with an enterprise. If you're going to build an, an app for FedEx or Home Depot or Microsoft, for that matter, um, it's going to be weeks or months before 
you get started and then before you're done, before you get paid. So very different business model. Either one works, but pick one. Our app is unusual. I'll tell you why. Um, she's pitching in ATV where there's lots of entrepreneurs. And in that room at that day could have been anywhere from 15 to 30 entrepreneurs. And who knows how many of them actually were her target audience, a non-technical founder who needed app development. She didn't know, but she knows that this is the right market for her, her, uh, their target market being startups and enterprises in this case, startups. Um, so the reason that was effective, her ask was come see me and talk to me afterwards. That's real. Um, way back when, at the beginning of pitch practice, around 2014 or so, there was an entrepreneur who just graduated from, uh, from code school here at the Village. And uh, that Friday, he graduated from the Iron Yard that Friday. And, uh, and he launched his startup, which was an app development company, at pitch practice, got his first customer the first day. That's real. People in this building need stuff built. And not everybody is a coder who can build it. So very specific, very good ask.